Hello, my name is Tim Baldridge, and today I want to talk about a project I've been working on for a couple weeks now called FNFX, which is a declarative functional uh, wrapper for JavaFX. Now, if you've ever done any GUI programming in JavaFX or Swing or any of the almost any tool which GUI toolkits ever made, you'll notice that they're full of object-oriented programming and uh, often a lot of mutation inside objects. So just like some other more recent models of working in the browser have tried to abstract away that and provide a more declarative UI, uh, namely stuff like uh, React.js uh, uh, abstracts a DOM with a virtual DOM, we take much the same approach in FNFX. We provide a data model that represents the UI, and then you update that model by regenerating the entire data structure, and then the, the new structure and the old structure are diffed between each other, and the resulting differences are sent to the components. Um, so let's let's take a look at this. Um, this example we're going to look at today uh, is a pretty simple example. It's basically two list boxes, and we can assign items from one list box to the other. But there's some fairly interesting um, interactions here that we have to deal with. So to start with, we're going to start off with our data model. Now, most applications in FNFX will, will consist of a single place where you store um, data. This could be something like uh, just an atom, as we're doing in this case. Um, it could even be something uh, more along the lines of a database, something like Datomic or something. But in this case, we are simply creating 10 items in list A, and then we have an empty vector for list B. And we're going to present a UI where we can shuffle items from one list to the other. Now we have the two operations that we can perform on our data model, namely assign right and assign left. So assign right will take an item with a given index in, the, in list A and move it to list B. Uh, so that's basically all this is. We get the list, we get the item in the list, we remove that item from the list, and we update the two lists by conjuring the value onto the end of the second list and removing it from the first. So now we need a way to display this UI. So to start with, we're going to start here at the main UI. And as you see, it's just hash maps with a few annotations. The type field represents the JavaFX type. So we start with a stage that contains a scene. It's kind of boilerplate. And then the root of the scene is an uh, HBox, which will align our elements horizontally from left to right and space them across uh, fairly nicely. So we don't have to worry about sizes or anything. We just kind of say, um, you know, make a fit. Now the three items in this horizontal box are list A, some assignment buttons, and list B. So let's start with the assignment buttons. Uh, take that back, let's start with the list. So we hand to each list the data appropriate for it. As you see here, our component takes in the data structure of data. We pull out list A and hand that to the list component, and we give it a key of list A. And then we're going to create a list view that has um, um, some items and a selection model. We're not really using that right now. but um, And then the items are simply, we're going to map over list item, which is another component, for each item in the list. Right? And then this component itself is just a label with the text for the item, some sizing information, um, and then what to do when it's clicked. And we'll, handle, we'll talk about events in just a second. And as you see here, we're reusing this component for both the first and the second list. Right? Very um, little code duplication here. This is just describing the structure of our UI. So as you can see, this will end up with a bunch of nested hash maps. So then we have assignment buttons. Uh, the text we have on the two buttons is left and right, um, and we have these actions. So if we go down here to our main model, we can take, we can um, create the root by calling the main component, which renders the view from the data. So if, if you're familiar at all with an MVC-like approach, these are our views, these components are our views, the model is the data model up here, and then um, this is, would be the app logic or perhaps the controller, right? So we render that and create the initial root node um, and we show it uh, down here. So this creates the Java FX, FX component that's the root based upon our specification. And we create a re-render function that basically says whenever we 
want to re-render the entire app, we go to the component and say, here's the new data. We just deref that atom, pass it again into main, re-render the whole structure, and we're good to go. So let's talk about events real quick. So what's going to happen is, is that we have these two buttons, assign left and assign right. So for assign left, we have on action which is the standard JavaFX event for when you click a button. The tag is something we'll use to, this could be operation or whatever. Um, anything in this map is just handed as is to um, the event handler. But um, there are some additional um, things that can be done. So the tag here is just for us to say, hey, the operation was assigned left. And then we're saying include. So what include does is a it include is a list of properties in the UI that we want to go grab and, and throw into this message before it's sent from the UI thread to the event handler. So this is saying go to list B, go to the selection model, and get the selected index. And if you can see up here, when we created the list component, we have an FNFX ID of ID. An ID here is either list A or list B. So include says Here's the path. The first item in the path is the FNFX ID. It runs out to there, and then it dives through the JavaFX components, traversing the, the structure until it gets to the end of this path. Kind of like a get-in, if you're familiar with that enclosure. So we grab the selection model and the selected index. And then that is associated as a key into this map. Okay? Sign left and assign right. So here down uh, here in our app logic, we we create we attach one handler. One handler for the entire app is attached to the root component that gets an event, and then we just dispatch on the tag. So if we get a sign right, we're going to go in to uh, the message and get out the selected index. So here is where it, it grabbed it and associated in. That's now the key. We get that out of the event and pass that into a sign right. So we just swap in, um, calling the update the um, the update command from our data model, and then when we're done, we re-render. So what's interesting about this approach is that for the most part, all of the mutation in the entire app is happening right here. Actually, all mutation is handled is handled here. There is no other mutation in the entire system except for in this controller. Everything else is uh, just values. So we have a sign left and a sign right. Okay, that works pretty well. So let's uh, let's give this a try. Take a look at it. So if we go down here, here is our item assignments. You know, who knows what this is for? We can take an item and move to the right. And you can see here that each time we're doing this, it's re-rendering the UI. And once the JIT warms up, um, it takes very little time. It may take up to a millisecond or so, and we got an error there. Uh, it may take up to a millisecond or so. Sometimes it's even less than a millisecond. If no work was performed, like here we're just selecting through this list, um, the re-rendering takes um, basically nothing because the model, the app model, has not changed. It, when we're selecting a new item here, the model itself... Um, uh, it has not changed, and so basically nothing has to be rendered, and therefore it doesn't take any time. Now, there's another thing we can do here is that I've also enabled double clicking. So, as you double click the items, they go from one uh, list to the other. So, let's look how that's implemented. On each item, we have on mouse clicked, and we're passing in item click as the tag. And the index is the index here. We're doing map index. We know which item it is in which list. And we're also passing in which list it is. So either list A or list B, right? And then event properties are other things from the JavaFX event that we want to include. This event properties um, is done here by... Um, uh, what we want is click count in this case. So in, in JavaFX, when you click the same component multiple times, it'll increment this click count. So the way to do a double click is to see what this value is. So as you see down here, we're in item click. When we get an item click message, we're checking to see if the click count is two. And if it is two, then we're getting the list uh, ID. And, it, and if it's A, 
then we're going to assign right, otherwise assign left. So we're reusing the model, right? Now there's nothing that says that we have to use swap here. I mean, this this swap could be uh, um, not so much mutation as um, uh, I mean, it, instead of mutating it with each one of these individual swaps, we could have one swap on the outside. That would work. Also, this function just gets fired off in a thread. This function could put into a core async channel. And then in that case, we may not even have to have any mutation at all. Um, the root of our entire thing would just be a loop that would take from that channel and then render something, uh, re-render the app and take again, and it, the, it would be contained. The, the app state would be contained in local. But it's it's kind of nice to to uh, view it this way um, because we can actually uh, deref data now and look at what the state of our data is. So we see here list A and list B, and there's certain items in each one, right? So that's the idea behind FNFX. Now there's optimizations to be done. This is a very early build of this. Um, you know, it's enough to do um, some different types of uh, forms and views and that sort of thing. Um, I mean, uh, we can do some pretty cool formatting uh, stuff in a fairly easy way. Uh, so here's like a, a login screen. Um, and when you type in a username and password, um, that's passed in uh, as uh, the message. We have the username and the password here. Um, but the goal is to allow you to kind of work in that single direction data flow uh, pattern that you'll update the data model, you'll run the views, you send the output of the views to the component, the component updates the minimal amount that it needs to, and then it, it wraps back around. Um, before I finish, I do want to talk a little bit about performance because the performance of this um, is actually pretty good. Uh, surprisingly, I think, for how dynamic it is. I mean, these are all keywords and stuff, right? Um, we do a lot of reflection, um, but the Java FX API is so consistent that we can often reflect over components and figure out what they're supposed to do just by their types and their names. Um, so based upon that, we on the fly generate closure code um, that wraps that um, and then compile it. So, so we only reflect over the components once and then we reuse those components, um, we reuse that compiled code uh, whenever it needs to be accessed again. Um, and uh, so, so we, we use reflection, but we only use it once and not every time a component uh, needs to be updated or something along those lines. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat about being able to run this on the JVM is we do have multiple threads. And so the diffing actually happens not on the UI thread, but on a separate thread. And so we get this pipeline effect where your app logic happens in one thread. It can change, it can generate views in another thread if you want. Um, another thread could perhaps be responsible for, um, for doing the diffing. And then only at the end when the diff has been calculated is the, do we actually transfer to the UI thread to update the UI. Um, so we get a, a very nice, uh, smooth experience. So that's an overview of FNFX. Um, uh, hopefully uh, you'll find it useful. It's been fun writing it, and I plan on continuing it and, uh, and seeing how far we can push writing applications with JavaFX and Clojure. Thank you for watching.